All right, hey, it's Mr. K doing a video for AP Physics 1. This is going to accompany the in-class rotation, what did I call it? In-class 1D kinematics rotation, yeah, whatever. Um, there are 10 problems, and what I noticed was that when you guys were working them, um, 1 through 3, 1 through 4, they're okay, probably 1 through 3. Once you hit 4, it started to get a little dicey. Um, and so I'm going to walk you through how I would solve it. Now, this is a big warning. Um, the reason why a lot of these problems were so hard today um, or yesterday is because that was really the first time you're doing it on your own. And uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of times when you're watching me, it looks easy. But, you know, I've, I've done these for, for 10, 11 years or more. Um, and so for you guys, it's your first time. So that's all right if you screw up, but let's get, let's get you a structure as to how to solve these. So I'm gonna go one by one. Um, yeah, this is just gonna be the video of me writing stuff out. Um, usually I do a frame and frame video, but this is just a supplemental. So let's see what we got. So we got number one. I'm gonna do this. This is number one. Um, a ball is dropped from rest and falls for a certain number of seconds. These were randomized numbers. How fall has it gone during this time? Uh, how, how far has it gone during this time? Ignore air resistance because that would change things and then submit a positive answer. So we need to figure out how far a ball fell and it's dropped from rest. And so if it's dropped from rest, we're looking for a change in let's say Y and um, it falls for a certain time T and that's given in the problem. Now, we know that it's dropped from rest. So the initial velocity, put a little V zero there, that is nothing meters per second. So that's good. We're looking for the change in position. Uh, the time was given to us. And again, this is a randomized number. Uh, in my, in, on mine, it says 19.12 seconds. So I'm just going to write that down. Um, and so to start here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference the equations that I have uh, for kinematics. Now, there are multiple ways to do, to do these problems. I'm going to go through the simplest one, I think, uh, for the problem. And then um, maybe, maybe we'll talk about a little bit more complex ideas. But what you should be doing is you should be writing down this list of things to help you organize, especially if you're new. Now, if, if you don't need the list, then you don't have to do the list. But I would recommend, you know, maybe if you are, if you are kind of lost, make this list of the five variables uh, for every single object that you have in your problem, as well as in the future for every dimension that we're working with. So what I mean by dimension is this thing follows straight down along a straight line. So I would make this list once for the one object. Now, if it was in a parabola, that's two dimensions for one object, so I'd make two lists. Um, so you'll, you'll see that as we go on. So I'm not sure how long this video is going to go, but I'm going to go, go ahead and hit it. So zero meters per second is going to be my starting velocity. Final velocity, I don't know. Acceleration, we're going to call that 10 meters per second squared. This is the acceleration due to gravity. Um, and then time is 19.12 seconds. And then the change in position, that's what I'm looking for. If I need to find final velocity, I can, but let's hope that I can just find it directly. So we have these equations. Let me see if I have some scratch paper here that I can write these equations on. And I'll, we, we will reference these for almost every problem here. So final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Uh, final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus 2a, the change in position. In this case, we're using y instead of x. Uh, and then change of position is equal to the initial velocity times time plus 1 half a t squared. So if you need to pause this video, do it. If you need to rewind this video, do it. Um, we're just going to, I'm just going to keep on going here. So looking right here, I have the change of position. That's what I want. Um, there are two equations that have that in it, the second equation and the third equation. Um, I guess there's another equation that we can write that the average velocity is going to be the initial plus the final divided by 2, assuming a constant change. And then um, it's also equal to the change in position total over the change in time. Uh, that could be useful. And a little bit of a rearrange here, this might also be useful. So. That's, that's just the same equation, just reworked a little bit. So looking at this, again, we want the change in position. So of these equations, these two have it. Now I notice that I don't have the final velocity. This equation requires final velocity to solve, and uh, I don't have it. So that kind of tells me I'm just going to use this equation here. 
And um, if I work that out, my change in position y is equal to my initial velocity, which is nothing, uh, multiplied by my time, so it really, really wouldn't matter. That would just all go away. I'm just going to cross that out. Uh, plus 1 half the acceleration, that's 10, or negative 10 if you want it to go down um, as negative, times time squared. And at that time, again, for me is 19.12 seconds. And um, I'm pretty much set there. So, hey, put that in. Half of 10 is going to be 5. And then that's going to be multiplied by 19.12. And we're going to square that. Can't do that in my head that fast. So there you go. And I'm using scientific notation, if you notice, right there. So I'm getting 1827.8. Because I have times 10 to the third power. So that moves the decimal over one, two, three times. Um, that's going to be in meters. And that's going to be enough for me to submit my answer. And if I look at my quiz that I made, uh, the answer is exactly that, um, 1827.87. Um, but it'll, it'll accept this just fine. So moving on. Do that for the freeze frame. Number two. Number two. Problem number two. Problem number two is going to be... Let me read it. A ball is dropped from rest and falls a distance of 88.66 meters. Knowing how far it fell, how many seconds... Has it been falling for? So in this case, we have the same kind of setup. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my, well, I kind of have the drawing already, except in this case, I need the time. I have that position. So let's go ahead and make that list again anyways. So initial velocity, we know it to be dropped from rest, so zero meters per second. Uh, final velocity, I don't know. Uh, acceleration is going to be 10 meters per second downwards per second, so meters per second squared. And then the time is what we're looking for. And the change in position Y is a total of, for me, 88.66 meters. And so I've randomized all these numbers, so your numbers are going to be different. But the method should be the exact same. So again, I'm looking for time. Um, there are two equations that have time in it, the first equation and the third equation. Uh, but I'm also going to notice that I don't have that final velocity again, so I can't really use the first equation to find time because that's two unknown things. So I'm just going to switch over to the third equation, and we're just going to write stuff in. So the third equation says change in position, which is the 88.66, is equal to initial velocity, which is nothing, so that all goes away, plus 1 half a 10, uh, t squared, and t squared is kind of what I want, so I'm going to put delta t squared. That's what I'm trying to solve for in this case. Um, looking at this, I've got 88, oops, 0.66, and that's going to be equal to half 10 is going to be 5, and then I've got a delta t squared. Uh, a little bit of algebra says that I should probably divide by 5, so 88.66 divided by the 5 will give us the t squared, and of course, to get rid of the square, we're going to square root both sides. So... Let's see if that'll get me my answer, 88.66 divided by 5, and then square rooted, square rooted, uh, gives me 4.211, and 4.211 seconds will be the unit, uh, and that is the correct answer for number 2. Moving on, number 3, 3, um, number 3 says that a ball is thrown with an unknown initial velocity. Uh, that means it can be thrown up or down. So I don't know what that initial velocity is. I just know that it's thrown. Um, if it is in the air for 4.61 seconds, so I do know the change in time, 4.61 seconds. You see how I'm writing stuff down as I'm reading it? And ends up at a final position of negative. So delta y is negative. 123.99 meters. Um, da, 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 da. Consider up to be positive and down to be negative. I need to find out the initial velocity of the ball. Do, 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 do. So let's see. How could I figure this out? What am I missing right now? Do I have final velocity? Um, no. Do I have the acceleration? And I should because we know that it is in free fall. So it's like just due to gravity. So I'm going to put 10 meters per second squared, but I'm going to make it negative 10 because in this problem, the negative actually matters. Um, we could have upwards motion, then downwards motion. So here are my five things. Here's my list again. And I'm looking for the initial velocity. And so if I'm looking for initial velocity, I don't have that final velocity once more. Um, so if I don't have final velocity, that kind of gets rid of these first two. 
and I'm looking for this initial velocity. I have the change of position. I do have the time, I believe. I do. Uh, and I have the acceleration. So I'm going to use that third one. And so um, to, to do that third one, I'm going I'm to write it down fully. In this case, the change in position y is equal to the initial velocity times the time uh, plus one half the acceleration times the time squared. Uh, at this point, you could plug in numbers, but if you want to, you can also just straight up solve it algebraically. Um, some of you hate this, but you're going to have to get good at this too. So I want that v initial. Um, let's move this crap over. So let's move all this over to the other side. And right now it's being added, so I'm going to subtract it. So the change in position y minus one half our acceleration and that negative is going to cancel out when we plug in the 10 so don't worry about that too much um my, so minus the delta t right there and that is equal to the initial velocity times the time and my last step would be to move that time over and so i have all this stuff minus one half a delta t squared and all that's going to be divided by that time again and make sure that it is all divided by it and that should equal your initial velocity. Um, now we can plug in numbers. This is our final equation. So really you can just plug in all your numbers straight to this no matter what numbers you get. Um, and let's see, my change in y was negative 123.99, essentially 124, uh, minus one half um, a minus 10. And we'll see, you see how that negative is gonna cancel out in a second. Uh, and then time again, so the time is 4. Point, actually not again, but 4.61, and that's going to be squared. And then we divide by that time now again by um, 4.61. And so if we did this properly, let's see, negative 123.99, got that. Um, minus and minus becomes plus. I'm just going to go ahead and going to do plus. Half a 10 is 5, so times, or plus 5 times 4.61 squared. I'm going to hit enter right now because that's the whole numerator. And then we're going to divide by what's on the bottom, 4.61 on the bottom. And that's going to give me uh, about negative 3.85 meters per second. And so what this tells me is that this thing was being thrown downwards in the beginning. Um, and that's what that is. So my answer would be exactly that, 3.85. I, I won't put in the units because um, the quiz does not take the letters for units. Um, let me get a new page and we'll continue on. So we are now on number four. Four. Uh, 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 four. There it is. And uh, number four says you have two trains are moving towards each other on parallel tracks. Train A has a speed of something. Train B has a speed of something else that's negative. It gives you how far away, they, how, apart, uh, far, how far apart they are. It, it has been a long day. And um, you got to find out how far does train A move until it passes train B. So you, essentially we need to fi figure out how far train A moves. Um, in total. That's that's the goal here. So we've got two trains. Let's see, train, train, top of the train, top of the train. None too fancy, but still a little bit of effort. And so I've got train A, I've got train B, and what it tells me is that train A is moving at six meters per second, and train B is moving at 16 meters per second the other way. So maybe a negative there. It makes, makes sense, right? One's positive, one neg one's negative. And I've got a distance between of 14,957 meters apart. And so if I've got a faster one and a slower one, I'm probably going to meet somewhere closer to the slower one, right? Um, and so here, here we are again. You know, how do you approach this problem? And the way that you would approach it is, well, if you're stuck, you make a list of stuff. And it's this, these five things. Now, I'm not going to do that just yet because I kind of want to solve it a different way because if you've seen the make a list of stuff thing. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, for, for this one, you would make your list. And really what it comes down to is that the acceleration is nothing for either car, right? So if the acceleration is nothing, that A is, is, is zero. So I'm going to cover up what zero times anything is, which is nothing. And so do you see how these equations kind of change a little bit? The first two don't really give you anything anymore, but that third one 
It definitely does. And so that third one says that the change in position of either car is equal to the velocity of that car times the time that we're allowing it to move. Okay? And so if you want to do it with math, you can. I kind of don't want to do it super mathy right now. Um, you can do it with graphing as well. We saw some people trying out graphing today. But I kind of want to just apply some physics to it. Um, so if you're doing it with math, just remember that change is final minus initial. And that still equals the velocity times the time. And the way that you would apply this, that's why it's important, is because the initial position for car A is like zero. But the initial position for car B is like 14,957, whatever, whatever that separation is, because it starts way out there, right? So with that negative sign plugged in for the velocity, um, that, that would be a more mathy way to do it. But you would, you would essentially have two equations, one for car A and one for car B, to, uh, to set equal to each other or to, to, to do elimination or substitution. I really don't want to do that at the moment. Um, but what I do want to do is I want, I want you to realize something about the problem. And this is, this is where the physics comes in. So like I said before, we would probably meet up somewhere over there, closer to the slow one. And what we know is car A would travel a certain distance. Oops. And car B would travel a certain distance to get there. And so what we see is that this would be like XB. And that would be over here like XA. Okay. Now, if we if we made the realization, do a better bracket, we could say that x the change of x a plus the change of x b, well, that should be equal to the entire distance that they are apart. You know, so x a and x b it, it helps to draw a picture. That's why that's why we draw the picture. Um, but what we know is that xa, that however far a goes, is just based off of how fast it is and like how long it's moving for. It's, it's this. Same thing for b. It's how fast it's moving and it's, it's how long it's moving for. Now I'm going to make that positive because we need these to sum up to the total distance. If I made the uh, velocity b and plugged it in as negative, then we'd be subtracting and, and that wouldn't work out. So Let's say that the uh, change of position A, that's that's going to be like 6 for me, or velocity A. I'm just going to write it on variable format for right now. Times the change in time, and we're going to add that to the uh, same thing for B times the change in time. Now, these changes of time are the exact same number, right? Because they start at the same time, they get there at the same time. And these should equal that, that separation distance D. Um, well, that's, that's, kinda, that's good. That's good. I think that's really good because this is what my problem is 6. Uh, delta T plus 16 delta T and this is equal to that big number 14957 and um, well 6 plus 16 is going to give me 22 22T um, and then 22T delta T is equal to that big thing and um, let's take a division so 14957 uh, divide out by 22 and I get a time of 679 point, let's call it nine seconds. And that is the time that it takes for the cars to reach each other. Um, that doesn't tell me how far it goes, but what I do know is that this equation right here, if I, if I wanna find out how far car A goes, all I gotta do is multiply the time by the velocity of A. So I'm just gonna take this time and we're gonna multiply that by the uh, six for the velocity of A. And I get 4,079, uh, sorry, 4,079 meters. Um, so XA is 4,079 meters. And that's how far A goes before it hits B. And of course, B would have the, the difference between 14,957 and 4,079. Um, and that would solve number four for us. We're getting on in about 20 minutes. Hopefully, you are fast forwarding through things if you don't need it. Um, if you do need it, then I'm going to keep on going. So let's look at number five. Number five says you have a motorcycle cop sitting at a stop sign. And then there is a car. This is one I kind of want to do in class anyway. But uh, I won't do it here. So let's see. we got a car there. Yeah. And then we got the motorcycle cop. Uh, quick drawing. 
Okay, let's just let's just set that as that. So we got a motorcycle cop, a motorcycle cop, and they are um, being passed by a car. And um, remember what I said before about the list of things. So we have the car, and we have the cop, and we have these lists of things that we can use to describe them. This isn't the only way to solve the problem. Again, we can do graphing, we can do physics -y way, but this is the mathematical setup. So a lot of you will be will be will find the mathematical setup to be easier for you. So <clears throat> the initial velocity for the car is nothing. Uh, actually, no, 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 no. That's the cop. The initial velocity of the cop is nothing. The initial velocity of the car for my problem is number five, uh, forty-five point four three. So forty-five point four three. Uh, that's the velocity for the car, excuse me. Um, that's the exact same velocity at the end, 45.43, because it doesn't speed up or slow down. Uh, the cop, though, it does change speed, and I don't, I don't know what the final speed of the cop is just yet. Uh, but I do know that the car has no acceleration, but the cop does. The cop in my problem has a 3.58 acceleration, meters per second per second. And uh, they go for a time, I don't know what that is, and they go for a distance, I also don't know what that is. So, if I am looking at these things here, I'm going to apply the equations to the car. And what's great is that I've got an acceleration of nothing, right? So, if I look, my acceleration is nothing, so all this is zero. I'm just gonna, again, cover that up. Uh, so that really leaves that last equation good for the car. So the car, it goes a certain distance um, and it's going to go at the velocity of the car, 45.43 and it's going to go for a certain period of time. Okay, that, that's the equation for the car. If you don't know a number, put down the letter. Um, I think a lot of people get stuck on if you don't have a number, you can't do anything. You just, just put down the letter, that's what they're for. Um, now I'm going to look at the, car, the cop again. The cop has an acceleration uh, but he does not have an initial velocity. So really for the cop, all of all of those go away, because that's initial velocity. That, all of those go away. And I've got these equations here. Um, and really, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at that last equation, because that's the equation that I use for the car, right? So let's just look at that for the cop, and that equals 1 half the acceleration A, 3.58, um, and then T squared. And, um, okay, well, I have two equations that really equal the same thing. So really, these two equations are equal to each other. And I could solve this for time. Now, I really want to find that position, but if I solve for time first, I can find the position by just replugging that value in. So let's just do some quick math here. If I have the left side equal to the right side, you see the t and the t squared? I can get rid of one of those, dividing by t. Um, and then I've got 45.43. Where'd my calculator go? There it is. 45.43. And I'm going to divide that by 3.58. And I'm going to multiply that by 2. And um, I get a number that's two point, actually 25.4 seconds. So the time is 25.4 seconds. And uh, like I said before, if we know the time, I can just plug that in right there and get how far. So let's multiply that by 45.43. And I get, um, like what, 1,153 meters? Yeah, 1,153 meters. 1,153 meters is how far the car would travel before getting caught by the cop, or how far the cop would travel by uh, before getting caught by the car. So um, there's a faster way to do this. And all you really need to do is, the, the cop is like speeding up, right? So if the cop is speeding up, when you know his, his average velocity is changing, when the cop's average velocity is the same as the car, he's caught the car. And that, that's kind of, you, you might have to go back, rewind and rethink that, but when, the cop's average velocity, it's increasing the entire time because he's accelerating. Um, when his average velocity reaches that of the cars, they've, they've hit the same spot because they've going, been going for the same time. So remember like average velocity times time is how far? They've been going for the same time. So whenever their average velocities are the same, they, they reach the same spot. Um, just to, to prove it, 
Um, we need the COPS average velocity to be 45.43. So the COPS starts at zero. Um, if the average is 45.43, that's right in the middle. So I'm just going to double it. And um, he's accelerating at a rate of 3.58. So I'm just going to divide that. And then um, that, that gives us a time that we might find familiar, which is like 25.4. Takes that long for the uh, COPS to catch up. And then uh, you just re-plug that in and just multiply by 45.43 done. So um, careful on trying to use the physics though because the physics is what's new. The math is what's old. Um, you're better at math than physics right now, guaranteed. So um, be careful. Um, we're going to go on to number 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 six. Number six. Ooh. So number six says a car driving with an initial velocity of something is traveling in the same direction as a train moving a constant velocity of 20 meters per second. If the car is currently near the back of the train and the train is so far along, how long does it take for the car to pass the train? So we've got number six here. I'm going to use this space on the right side of my page. And I've got a, um, a train, let's say. And that train is yay long. And we've got a car that's in the back. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be lazy about it. Sorry. Um, train. And this is the car. And what we know is, uh, or what we want, rather, is we want the time. So the time is our big question mark. Um, we have two things. If you want to do it the mathy way, again, you, you make that list of the five variables for the two things. Um, but I kind of want to do it in a more physics-y way. So I know that the car is driving with an initial velocity of 24 meters per second. V car, put VC for that. Um, it's moving in the same direction as a train, moving at a constant velocity of 20 meters per second, V train, um, VT. And uh, the train is 162 meters long, so it's got 162 meters is how far the car needs to catch up. Now, if you've, if you've, ever, if you've ever driven behind somebody, it doesn't matter how fast they're going doesn't really matter how fast you're going. What really matters is how fast they're going compared to you overall. So, you know, if you're going to 10, if you're going to 10 miles per hour and they're going at 15 miles per hour, it's really that five mile per hour difference that matters. If you're, if you're going at 65 miles per hour and somebody that's going at 70 miles per hour, it's really that five miles per hour difference that really matters. Um, and so we're going to kind of use that here. So the train's going at 20. How much faster is the car going compared to the train? And in my problem, it's four. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that train go at zero meters per second by, by taking away 20 meters per second from it. Um, that's going to alter my problem a bit. That's going to alter my perspective. It's like I'm watching the train moving to the right, but I'm, I'm like moving my head with it. So it, it doesn't really look like it's moving if I only see the train and nothing else. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take away 20. If I do that here, I'm going to have to take away 20 over here meters per second, right? And that gives me a total of four meters per second. <clears throat> and now this is called a frame of reference problem. So th that car is moving at four meters per second compared to the train. And the car just needs to go like that far. So if we reference before, velocity times time equals the change of position, um, the velocity times the time times is equal to the change of position. Uh, the velocity is four. The time's what I want. The change of position is 162. And um, divide. <clears throat> so 162 divided by 4 is going to be fantastic. And I get uh, 40.5 right there. And that's my time. Number 7. Number, number 7. Yeah. Okay. Number 7. Let's get a new page. 7 says you drop a rock off a cliff. 2.4 seconds later, you, hear, you drop a stone. How far apart are the two objects after the stone has been falling for 2.2 seconds? So, let's see, number seven, you drop a rock, and then it falls for 2.4 seconds. 2.4 seconds of fall equals change of time one, let's say, subscripts. Um, <clears throat> and then after that, you drop a stone, and... So at that time, you drop a stone, and it falls for 
2.2 seconds. Of course, the rock is still falling during that time. Um, you want to figure out how far apart the two objects are. So really, you know, we're looking at changes of position and where things are. Um, we're looking at we're looking at this equation, honestly. Um, initial velocity times time plus one half a t squared. So that equation is what's good for us here. I, I'm dropping both of them. So yeah, get rid of that. Um, so if I can find out like where they're at after their respective times of falling, then I can just subtract those two. So like the rock, it says um, I drop it and it falls for 2.4 seconds before I drop the other thing. Uh, but then, you know, as the other thing's falling, 2.2 seconds, the rock is still dropping, right? So the total time of the rock is 2.4 plus 2.2. That's 6.6. Or actually, not 6.6, 4.6 seconds. Okay, that's the total time of fall for the rock. The stone is falling for 2.2 seconds, and we just drop it from there. So we got to compare how far these things have gone. Um, so let's use a is 10, right? So that's going to be 5 times t squared, and uh, this is equal to the change of position y, let's say. Um, so I can plug this in for either thing. So let's say like 5 times the 4.6 squared. Um, gives me, um, what is that, 105.8. So this is 105.8 meter of fall. And then the stone, 5 times 2.2 squirt, gives me a 24.2 meter fall. So 24.2 meter fall. Now, if I want the answer, I really need to figure out how far apart they are. So let's go ahead and just take one and minus the other. And the answer is about 81.6. That is the answer in the problem. Of course, enter a positive number because um, it's asking about how far apart they are, not exactly their positions. Uh, going down to number eight. Number eight. Let's see. How many fingers is that? Is that eight? It looks like eight. So eight. A person makes a vertical jump and has a recorded air time of a certain time. So here they are. They're on the ground and then they jump up into the air and then they fall back down to the ground. This is still 1D motion. Um, but, you know, by time, they, they go up and move over. Uh, so, <clears throat> let's see, the time is that. What was, their, what was their velocity leaving the ground? So, this person's up in the air for like 0 0.56 seconds up in the air, right? Um, well, w when they jump, you know, they're being pulled back down. When they're at the top, they're still being pulled back down. So... Gravity is, is acting on them for the entire time. So their acceleration is still negative 10 meters per second squared. I'm going to consider down to be negative um, <clears throat> because you have upwards motion and then you have downwards motion. So, so we kind of need to choose downwards to be negative. Um, and so if I look at this problem, what's, what's probably going to hang you up is like where to even start um, because there seems to be not enough information. But... What you should know is that if you cut the problem in half, um, this person jumps. What happens at the height, the maximum height, when you throw something up into the air? And really what, what happens is it turns around, right? Um, that means in order to turn around, the velocity in that direction has to be zero at the top. Well, that velocity being zero, that helps us out. That's the final velocity here for the first half or the initial velocity for the second half. We're going to split the problem in half. So if we split the problem in half, we're going to take that 0.56 and divide that by 2. So about 0.28, right? So my time for half this problem is about 0 0.28 seconds. Okay? And so if I start up here and I fall down... And I, and I, right before I hit the ground, this is my VF right here. My initial velocity is nothing. My VF is, I don't know. But I actually want this because the velocity that it, he hits the ground with or she hits the ground with is the same velocity as what they left the ground with. That's kind of interesting, right? Look at the symmetry. Um, <clears throat> then I can figure it out. My, uh, I'm really just using that first equation. Initial velocity is the, uh, or plus the acceleration times the time is going to be my final. So let's take it, and my initial velocity for the second half is zero, 
my acceleration is like negative 10 and that means my time is 0.2 h multiply so I get about 2.8 meters per second and that would be the final velocity over here 2.8 meters per second the vector would point downwards um, but that's the same as in the beginning because gravity not only speeds you up on the way down but it also slowed you down on the way up um, and so your answer is 2.8 for that initial velocity number nine almost done <coughs> number nine nine five fingers and a four on top of it fit it um, you got a car traveling at all these different speeds for different times what's the average speed of the trip I'm not going to solve this one totally for you because I kind of want, I think you can just do it on your own. It's not that bad. Um, we are looking for speed, first of all, and we are particularly looking for average speed. Speed is distance divided by time. And we have all these different times here. And so if you can add up all the times, what are the three different times? Um, one, two, three, yeah, three different times. If you find the total distance of motion of travel, then you can find the average speed whenever you take that ratio. Um, and that's all I'm going I'm to tell you about that. That's actually pretty much solving the problem for you. Um, I'm going to do the last one and this is a 36 minute video. Wow. So 10 at the very end, this is the last one, 10, 10, 10, 10. Um, <clears throat> It says, the driver of a car is speeding down the road. When they notice the red brake lights coming up fast, they slam on the brakes and skid to a stop with just a few inches before the stop traffic. If the driver, if the driver of the speeding car, typo, um, was moving three times their initial speed, how much farther would they need in order to stop? Answer in multiples of their initial stopping distance. So this is actually from driver's ed. Um, and... What you need to know is that you have an equation already that kind of tells you this. You have this equation, initial velocity time plus one-half at squared. And um, you also have the, this equation here, vf squared equals v initial squared plus 2a, the change in position. So if you were looking for the time to stop, you'd probably look at the first equation, okay? If you were looking for the, um, actually maybe the first equation over here, I'm sorry. That would be even easier, wouldn't it? Anyways, you have these three equations, haha. -ha. But if you're looking for how far you have to go before you need to stop if you're moving faster, you're probably looking at this guy. So, <clears throat> your final velocity better be zero <laughs> because you're trying to stop that's just zero. Now, if we want to figure out how long, how far you would have to go before you stopped, you would have to understand that what's stopping you, if you're slamming on your brakes and you're, you are skidding to a stop, your acceleration, no matter how far you go, is pretty much the same thing, okay? Because you're, you're working with something called kinetic friction, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. But the acceleration is the same for either case. What's changing here is your initial velocity and by response your change of position so your initial velocity is equal to 2 times the acceleration times the change of position um, those two things need to be equal to each other because essentially one is being subtracted or added to the other um, and that has to equal zero so these two things need to be the same size at least so if you were to look at this if a is constant you can make it whatever number you want. I'm just going to make it 1 for now. Um, if A is constant, if we make it 1, we've got something that looks like this. Okay? Now, if you, you just run a hypothetical. If you put in, like, an initial velocity of 2 meters per second, all right, what is, what, how far would you go if, if the acceleration is 1? Remember, the acceleration could be whatever number you want. Um, so this is 2 times 2, that's 4. And that's two change of position. So change of position is basically it's it's two, right? Now, what if we doubled the initial speed? What if the initial speed wasn't two? What if it was four? Four squared is equal to two times the initial position, or times the change of position. What's four squared? That's sixteen, right? 
That's two, change position. That's gonna be eight. Okay, if we double the speed, we don't double how far we have to stop. We quadrupled it. What if we tripled the speed? What if we tripled our initial speed? Three times two is gonna be six. Six squared equals two, the change of position. Okay, tripling the speed, how much farther would we have to go to stop? That's 36 is equal to two delta x. Um, what is it, 18? So that's change of position is equal to 18. If we triple the speed, we don't triple the distance to stop, right? What is that? That's, that's like times nine. And what you should realize is that when we double the speed, we have that square on there, right? So it doesn't double the distance to stop, it quadruples it. If we triple the thing in here, it doesn't triple the distance to stop, it Three times three at nine. What was that? I don't even know what the thing is right now. So that's number 10. I'm going to stop it right here because this is a 40 minute video. Holy crap. Um, and hopefully this helps you out. Hopefully you are using the fingers to navigate. Bye.